Hello, my friends. Today, there is more good news from the Kursk direction. Uh, the Ukrainian armed forces have managed to advance from two sides in the northern part. Their progress is 6 kilometers and 300 meters with a width of 22 kilometers. This is a significant advance overall, bringing the Ukrainian forces close to the uh, settlement of Korenevo. Uh, battles ongoing around the village of Snagnost. Russian uh, sources are already reporting that fighting is taking place in the village of Alexeevska, Kauchuk, and Obshikolodis. As you can see, the Ukrainian forces uh, continue to expand the territory under their control. For the south, um, the Ukrainian armed forces advanced another 7 kilometers across the fields and the Russians are now claiming that the Ukrainian armed forces is in the settlement of Kamyshne and Azorki. This means the Ukrainian armed forces are continuing to move forward. We are waiting for more confirmations and changes along the front line. Meanwhile, uh, the Russians have announced that their offer of a ceasefire is now cancelled due to the Ukrainian forces enter Russian territory. A Russian representative at the UN stated that Putin's generous offer from June to end the war if Ukraine surrenders at Zaporizhia, Kherson, Donetsk, Luhansk and Crimea uh, and accepted all other Moscow's demands is no longer valid, rejecting any negotiators. And the representative of Belarus has even stated that due to the situation at the border, they have the right to defend themselves or attack Ukrainian territory. In case of repeated provocations like this, Belarus has the right to take countermeasures to protect its territory, said the Belarusian representative at the UN regarding drone flights. Overall, it seems they are laying the groundwork for conducting an offensive operation in Ukraine. Additionally, there is another report from Sirsky and Zelensky regarding the situation in the Kursk region. It appears that all successes are gradually being confirmed of, uh, on the map day, uh, day by day. Uh, meanwhile, Medvedev has once again decided to threaten Ukraine. Они понесут за то, что сделали, безусловно, заслуженное наказание. Значит, такое наказание, которое предполагает самые разные последствия для тех, кто это сделал, включая руководство киевского националистического режима. Meanwhile, uh, on the Ukrainian front, uh, it must be a knowledge uh, that the situation remains very difficult in the Pokrovsk direction. Uh, there are significant problems. The Russians are making a maximum effort to advance toward the highway. Yesterday, they achieved new successes and progress. Uh, if earlier, uh, the closest uh, the Russians were to the highway was uh, was Dvizhenka, Today, after another breakthrough, the nearest point is Yelizavetivka. Here, the distance from uh, the front line to the highway is only uh, 2 kilometers and 900 meters. It's evident that the Russians are getting closer to Nova Ekonomichne. The distance to the outskirts is almost 7 kilometers. The Russians have also managed to advance closer to the village of Tarasivka. Uh, here too, the offensive uh, is advancing along a broad front. Uh, however, it seems that they are stretching this section of the front specifically uh, towards Kostantinivka, uh, which further proves the large-scale plans uh, of the Russians. Additionally, intense battles are taking place uh, for Jelanne, uh, Komushivka, uh, then Mykolaevka and Ptyche. Here, the Russians are trying to push the Ukrainian forces out of these settlements to advance towards the outskirts of Selidove. Uh, 
Uh, yesterday evening, uh, Ukrainian forces unofficially reported that the Russians had captured Jalanne. Moreover, the battles for Hrodivka continue with fighting already occurring within the settlement. If the Russians manage to secure their position there, the outskirts of Mirnograd will immediately come under attack. Additionally, the Russians still have enough resource uh, to launch an active offensive in the Turetsk direction. They have practically captured New York and now battles a region uh, near Suhabalka, Pantelimonivka, and they are pushing from Zelizne towards Turetsk. The shelling of all frontline settlements continue unabated. In the Chasivyar direction, uh, compared to other sections of the front, there is a relative lull with only seven assaults over the past day. For example, there were 50 assaults in the Pokrovsk direction. However, the Ukrainian forces from the field report that the situation here is still very difficult and the Russians have not stopped trying to advance and secure positions in the Novy and Jovtnevy micro-districts. But so far, there have been no changes to the front line in this area over the past day. In the Siversk direction, the Russians are attacking Verkhnyokaminske and Spirne. However, there have been no changes here either as the Ukrainian forces managed to repel all attacks. In the Krimina direction, the Russians are assaulting Nevske, Terne, and Torske. However, as before, the Russians haven't achieved any success and the front line remains unchanged. In the Svatova area, battles are ongoing for uh, Berestove, also Stelmachivka and Andreevka. It seems that activity here has increased again, but after the Russians reached a water barrier, the front line has stalled and they have made no further gains. Similar to the south, uh, the fighting for the village of Makivka continues, but here too, uh, the front line remains unchanged. In the Kupiansk direction, Battles are ongoing for Sinkivka, Petropavlivka, uh, then Glushkivka, and across the fields uh, as the Russians attempt to advance towards Kalisnikivka. The situation is challenging. Over the past day, there have been 12 assaults, but the Ukrainian forces have managed to hold the front line without any changes. In the Kharkiv direction, the Russians conducted two attacks within the past day in the areas of Vovchansk and the village of Tyche. However, they didn't achieve any success and the front line remains unchanged. The Ukrainian forces haven't launched any new counterattacks so far. In the Kurakhove direction, mm, fierce battles are ongoing for Krasnohorivka. Today, unfortunately, the Russians have made further gains, advancing by 1 km 250 meters. As a result, more of the town is fallen under the control of the Russians, and the Ukrainian forces are struggling to hold uh, on the last few streets. Sadly, it seems we are losing this town. Additionally, uh, the battle for the village of Kostantinivka continues, but um, there have been no significant changes. In the Vuhledar direction, the Russians continue to assault Vuhledar and attempt to break through to the village, but the Ukrainian forces are successfully repelling all attacks. There is even video evidence showing how the 72nd and 79th brigades of the Ukrainian forces thwart the Russian advance, resulting in the destruction of three BMPs, uh, two, uh, six BMPs of unknown modification, one BMP-3 and several other vehicles, including a tank. Clearly, uh, just because the front line appears unchanged, it doesn't mean 
things are calm. Every day, the Ukrainian forces perform enormous efforts to maintain their defense. In the Zaporizhia direction, the Russians are assaulting Novo Andreevka and conducting shelling along the front line. However, they haven't achieved any new successes and their situation remains unchanged. In the Kherson direction, uh, there has been a significant increase in shelling on the right bank of the Dnipro River. And additionally, there are reports of strikes in Skadovsk and Novakahovka. So it's evident that the Ukrainian forces continue to eliminate Russian forces on their occupied territories. And that's all from me. So please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.